Hello and welcome dear students and uh, today we will be discussing the last part of anatomy series which is the, the nerve innervation of the pelvis along with the arterial supply to the pelvis, arterial and of course venous drainage to the pelvis. So uh, <clears throat> today we have in front of you uh, the innervation to the uh, female pelvis. I have taken uh, the anatomy section regarding everything up till now, you know, the mus muscles, the bones, the attachments and everything that was possible, that was possibly, uh, you know, important. Lymphatic drainage was taken in the last class, you know, the uh, relationship of uterus, uh, the ureter, uterine artery, everything has already been discussed. And today I am taking the last section of this uh, lecture series that is about the... Uh, not just the you know the nerve supply but also the arterial supply and arterial supply mind you is a, is a question that was asked recently in uh, one of the question papers in DNB so please be careful while watching this lecture there's a separate lecture also based on the just the arterial supply uh, to make it more crisp clear and in a short span of time this is obviously a more detailed lecture so without wasting time let's uh, begin further and let's go and, and discuss the um, you know these uh, salient features in anatomy series so as you can see on the slide uh, i've tried to uh, manage it uh, into three crisp headings so the innovation to the female genital organs is number one the somatic nerves second is the autonomic nervous system that includes the sympathetic supply and the parasympathetic supply so in the somatic nerves the most important nerve happens to be the pudendal nerve and that belongs to the lumbosacral plexus so you have this t12 L1 to 5, S1 to 5, you've got all these, you know, uh, uh, the supply, uh, you know, from these uh, nerve roots and its branches. They supply the external internal genital organs, the lower abdominal walls. So what are we concerned with? We are concerned with all the external internal genital organs, the lower abdominal wall, the urogenital diaphragm, all the structures around. And of course, the perineum. So, pudendal nerve is the most important nerve when we're discussing with uh, discussing about the uh, nerve supply of the pelvis. We cannot skip this nerve. This is a very important nerve. The pudendal nerve is formed from the ventral divisions of S2, S3, S4. Always remember this S2, S3, S4 and it's there in front of the piriformis muscle. It leaves the pelvic cavity through the greater sciatic foramen and enters the gluteal region. Okay, once it goes to the gluteal region, also it enters the perineum passing through the lesser sciatic foramen by passing around the sacrospinous ligament near its attachment to the ischial spine. And this is the place for the pudendal block. Here's the applied anatomy. So why do we study anatomy? Basically because of its application in the day-to-day -day regular life. Otherwise, what's the need of revising all these topics? It's been long back we studied in MBBS. Why are we revising it now? It's because of the relevant applied anatomy. So as I have taken in other sections as well, I'm continuing here as well. I'm trying to tell you the applied anatomy. So pudendal nerve finally is one of the extensions of S2, S3, S4, ventral divisions. It uh, uh, leaves the pelvic cavity through the greater sciatic foramen and re-enters by the lesser sciatic foramen and then passes through the sacrospinous ligament around the ischial spine. So you palpate the ischial spine and you give a nerve block there. Obviously, it is accompanied by the pudendal vessels through its course. Whenever you're giving a, a pudendal block, always suck, first suck and then give, right? It divides into three terminal branches, which are very, very important, which I'll be discussing later on. The dorsal nerve of clitoris, the perineal nerve, and the inferior rectal nerve. Remember these three, it will come again. So, uh, the dorsal nerve of clitoris, perineal nerve, perineal nerve, very, very important, and inferior rectal nerve. With the same name, you have almost the arteries as well. Pudendal block anesthesia is performed to provide here the pain relief during childbirth by infiltrating the local anesthetic drug around the pudendal nerve near the ischial spine. So you palpate the ischial spine and you give the nerve block. Then we come to the parasympathetic fibers. So the parasympathetic fibers, they enter the pelvic places through the pelvic splanchnic nerves, which are also called as the nervi elegantis and originate from what? S2, S3, S4 spinal segments. They are vasodilatory, number one. They stimulate the bladder contraction number two and they stimulate the clitoral erection number three so these are the three prime uh, functions of what the parasympathetic nerves as if, if you do remember sympathetic nervous system it holds the urine back and parasympathetic uh, system it lets you pee so stimulates the bladder contraction stimulates the clitoral erection and vasodilatory they join the sympathetic nerves to form a plexus and which then supplies the 
genital organ. So this is one picture that shows you the lumbosacral plexus actually, nothing else. So here you have the pudendal nerve by S2, S3, S4. Here you have the sciatic, look at the sciatic nerve, how bulky and important this nerve is. And it's formed by so many roots, it's got a root from, uh, you know, uh, L4 also, L5 also, S1 also, S2, S3 as well. So it's then it's form, forming the sciatic nerve, a portion of it goes fibular portion, then you have a tibial portion. And this is the inferior gluteal nerve, very, very important, and the superior gluteal nerve, another very important nerve over here. And finally, we reach the parasympathetic nerves. See, these nervous systems are not asked much, but uh, the applied anatomy is important, out of which one we just discussed. The other one is about the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system. What do they do to, to the bladder, which is very important. And then finally, uh, obviously, in uh, length, we're discussing a little bit about the sympathetic nervous system. Why? Because it's got a couple of nerves which you should know. So this arises usually from the T11 to L2 spinal segments. See, thoracolumbar and lumbosacral, mostly, lumbosacral, mostly is the parasympathetic. But sympathetic is it's finishing off from thoracolumbar supply. So the sympathetic ganglia, they're situated in the bodies of lumbar vertebrae and the sacrum. The prevertebral sympathetic plexus, you know that these, they have their ganglia, that's why it's called as autonomic nervous system. Otherwise, it would have been called somatic nervous system, right? Because of the ganglia, they're a peripheral in location. <coughs> the prevertebral sympathetic system uh, plexus continues downwards as what? Superior hypogastric plexus, uh, which is situated on the fifth lumbar vertebra, sacral promontory and aortic bifurcation. So the superior hypogastric plexus, the one which we're going to talk about, and the superior hypogastric plexus is divided into the right and left hypogastric nerves, okay, which run on either side of the pelvis. I'll just see if I have, uh, you know... A picture of it or not let me see hmm. we talked about the thracolumbar yeah we, we do have so let me first discuss and then we'll come back to it right so the superior hypogastric plexus divided into right and left hypogastric nerves which run on either side of the pelvis they are joined by pelvic splanchnic nerves which you just discussed containing the parasympathetic fibers from s2 to s4 to form the right and left inferior hypogastric plexus are you getting me so the superior hypogastric plexus, which is actually the, uh, you know, the uh, sympathetic uh, plexus, so superior hypogastric plexus it divides into the superior, uh, the right and the left hypogastric nerves. And the right and left hypogastric nerves are joined by the parasympathetic fibers to form the inferior hypogastric plexus, okay, at the base of the broad ligament. Sympathetic nervous systems, what do they do? They control the smooth muscles of the uterus and the bladder. They produce vasoconstriction, right? Opposite to what the parasympathetic system was doing. Each inferior hypogastric plexus is divided into three parts uh, with each accompanying branches of the internal iliac artery. They are vesical plexus for the bladder, the utero-vaginal plexus, okay, for the female genital organs and the middle rectal plexus for rectum. So you have three important organs, the bladder, the uterus and the rectum. So this is how they are divided. They are vesical plexus, utero-vaginal plexus and the middle rectal plexus. The utero-vaginal plexus lies in the uterosacral ligaments, uh, mac and rods, ligaments posterior to the cervix. So you know about this, uh, the sympathetic plexus as well. Just a little word about something that is uh, important over here, right in the beginning. So this is a lumbosacral plexus, which supplies the genital organs. In short, we'll just discuss it. So there's an ilioinguinal nerve, which is the nerve root is L1. It's sensory type and it supplies the mons and the labia majora. The genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve, which is L1, L2, which is, it supplies the most of uh, the anterior part of the vulva. Then you have the posterior femoral uh, cutaneous nerve, which supplies the vulva and the perineum. And then, of course, you have the pudendal nerve, which is supplying well everywhere. So vulva, perineum, perianal skin, clitoris, urethra, vaginal vestibule, external anal sphincter, urogenital diaphragm. So everything outside that you can name is supplied by pudendal nerve. So basically all the entire of the perineum. But inside, or let's say we're talking about the perineum mostly over here. So mons and labia is something specific, ilioinguinal nerve. Anterior vulva, you have genital branch of genitofemoral nerve, right? The vulva and perineum well supplied by both pudendal nerve and posterior femoral cutaneous nerve. And then over here you have this, you know, this thoracolumbar plexus that I was talking to you about. So can you see this is the femoral nerve branches are, you know, L2, L3, L4 mostly. And over here it's written, can you see the, your iliohypogastric nerve? It's uh, L1 basically. Ilioinguinal nerve again L1. So subcostal nerve T12. But genitofemoral nerve is actually coming from L1 and L2 both if you can see that. 
and your favorite obturator nerve which you know that when it gets injured you have mostly the verdine hysterectomy to blame so l2 l3 l4 so well uh, this is uh, what it was and let's just discuss a little bit of the clinical significance of applied anatomy so presacral neurectomy have you heard this name ever before presacral neurectomy actually is nothing but a surgical procedure done done when yes it's basically done to uh, you know uh, perform a very severe uh, uh, you know a very uh, over exhaustive or let's say over ambitious uh, uh, treatment for uh, severe dysmenorrhea but mostly so in case of uh, severe endometriosis you know sacral presacral neurectomy is done so anyways it's a surgical procedure in which the superior hypogastric plexus nerves they are divided rarely performed in severe dysmenorrhea and central pain refractory to any medical treatment they probably will go ahead and doing that uh, especially when you're doing endometriotic surgery and the patient is complaining of pain 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 again and again refractory to any medical treatment you go ahead and do perform the uh, presacral neurectomy again this is a very uh, rare applied anatomy more important are injury to the nerves of inferior hypogastric plexus in extensive pelvic cancer surgeries especially in verdimes like I was telling you uh, can cause urinary bowel and sexual dysfunction so when i was talking to you about obturator injury it causes a different uh, problem uh, whenever there is there are uh, injuries to other important nerve like especially of the inferior hypogastric plexus you can have varying degrees of uh, you know urinary and bowel complaints which they're not specified good for you you don't have to remember everything uterine myometrium has alpha and beta adrenergic uh, you know uh, cholinergic receptors so uh, you know ritodrin it's a it's a sympathomimetic now that's very important so what did we study the sympathetic nervous system what does it what does it do it basically is responsible for uh, uterine relaxation because what was doing the contraction uh, uh, your uh, your uh, uh, parasympathetic nervous system so to uh, sympathomimetics they are drugs that like uh, the ritodrin sympathomimetic drugs they are causing the relaxation so this is important uh, applied anatomy paracervical block analgesia which is responsible for blocking the sympathetic and parasympathetic ner uh, sensory nerve supply it causes pain and pain relief in labor epidural analgesia blocks both the sympathetic and parasympathetic even somatic nerves to provide pain relief in labor and of course you have the uterovaginal plexus uh, or frankenhauser's plexus is blocked in uh, luna which is called as laparoscopic uterine nerve ablation again a treatment for dysmenorrhea so uterovaginal plexus we just re recently discussed one of the three plexuses of the sympathetic nervous system is blocked as one of the treatments of one of the treatments of severe dysmenorrhea because of maybe anything but mostly endometriosis so uh, nerve supply not usually asked if at all it will be asked it's mostly on these uh, you know three uh, basic um, you know nerve supplies that is somatic nerve supply autonomic which includes both sympathetic and parasympathetic system if you just remember the names of these ganglions which i spoke to you and a little bit of applied anatomy that's going to be the only question asked in your theory exam the, the applied anatomy and the nerve supply in general nothing specific so please uh, just fix yourself on it and now we go on to studying most important uh, highly recommend you to uh, watch it very closely because now we'll be talking about the blood supply of the uh, of the pelvis 